Six Nations Team of the Week for week number two, folks. We had two pretty bloody good games in the first two. Third game was all right. And, um, yeah, some kind of key performance from each of the games. We're going to go through 15 guys plus a few honorable mentions, uh, some key stats and moments and whatnot, and you guys can let us know your thoughts on who you would be picking if you were picking a Team of the Week. I am going to start with a loose air prop, and I'm going to say... Uh, old Alice Genge. I mean, he gets a nice try assist, admittedly. He sets up uh, Chesham's try. Some slick hands as he's going down. A meter out from the line. Uh, sets up the man next to him. So that's bloody good. But what's the main reason you pick your prop? You mainly pick him because he scrums. And Alice Genge didn't concede a penalty. It's almost unbelievable. The guy had a pretty notorious record for conceding penalties last year, but he's been remarkably low this year and they were on top of the Italian scrum for the majority of that game so uh, Genji is certainly a big part of that um, interestingly though as his scrummaging game seemed to be kind of dominant his normal running game seemed to maybe suffer a little bit like eight runs for nine meters according to the Opta stats rather than the Six Nations website ones which are way more generous with their run meters um, six, eight, sorry, eight runs for nine meters that's um that's just low for Genji but if you want to take low run meters but dominant scrummaging <clears throat> for a prop <clears throat> i'll take that um maybe that's my throat not wanting to agree with me the other part of my brain say no we love a running prop i mean we love it when he runs but we love it when he scrums uh five from seven tackles five passes as he does, doesn't concede a penalty so yeah genji he's my first pick and then uh from ireland I have picked an Irish tight head prop in my team of the week before, but it's usually old Tyg. In this case, it's his replacement, Finlay Bealham. He's looked the part the last couple of weeks, hasn't he? Be decently pretty impressive. Again, the scrummaging was good, man. Up against a pretty big uh, French pack. They didn't look, um, you know, dominated or anything like we thought might be the case so you know he held up really well which was really pleasing i don't think by conceded any penalties so it's not like he was getting one over him but by is a pretty tricky customer so um but no he didn't it wasn't like a weakness it's not like the scrum suddenly deteriorated from from ireland so good stuff from him six runs for three meters is um you know not the flash of stuff but man does he have another like like genji a really nice try assist you gotta say along with his scrummaging a nice try assist. I mean, that pop pass to uh, Keenan was beautiful stuff. Uh, well worked. Perfect timing. Perfect placement. Uh, sets them up for a try. He has five passes in total. He also doesn't concede any penalties. And defensively, man, 13 from 14 tackles. What a shift. Start with the scrummaging, the defensive work, and caps it off with a nice um, try assist as well. So happy days for Finley Bealham. Hooker. Hooker was a tough one. Multiple hookers scored tries in this game, this game, this week. Uh, you know, Owen's got one for, for Wales. Turner got one uh, for the Scots. Jamie George got one. The guy I picked, he didn't get one. Julien Marchand didn't get a try. Uh, and to be honest, his carrying game was kept very quiet by the Irish defence. I mean, eight runs, six metres, and a defender beaten. It's not that flash. Not that flash. I mean, it's similar to what the two um, props I just said got, but generally, hookers have better attacking numbers than props. It is built differently. Uh, but where he does excel, and where he excelled phenomenally last year as well, is his defensive game. Julien Marchand is an absolute nuisance on defense. I mean, four passes, an offload, 19 out of 20 tackles. Two turnovers, one. He's the top turnover guy for that game. Uh, the line out operates at 90%, which is pretty bloody good. He does concede a penalty, but uh, defensively, very, very, very capable player. Uh, certainly one of the best in the world. Maybe the best. Him and Malcolm Marks are probably the two best defensive hookers in the game, off the top of my head. There's certainly some other guys who can attack better, like some Sheehan and Tokiaho and whatnot, but defensively, uh, those guys are really, really pretty bloody good. So there you go. There's your front row. Uh, for Locks. I went with another Frenchman uh, in Thibaut Flamont. Um, a lot of defensive shit. I think he was the top tackler for the week. I mean, you know I love me a top tackler because the tackling doesn't get the glory. The glory is all about the big carries and the tries and the, the flashy stuff. 
26 out of 26 tackles and not a penalty conceded. That's a shift. And 11 runs for 27 meters in that game was actually kind of hard meters to come by for the French forwards. The French forwards, I think maybe Gelanche got more than him because he had that weak clean break when Pinot put him into that gap. But very few of the French forwards managed to get a lot of go forward ball. So for Flamont to have uh, you know more than two meters of carry as a lock in that in that game is a good shift. Trust me. Uh, he beats a defender. He has six passes and offload, four line out wins. So one of the top guys. Um, you know it's his kind of half break in early on in the game. He gets like a half break where he still gets brought down. It's not quite a clean break. It's a half break, and then it puts France on the front foot. Oh, and a scramble. I think Vanderfli or someone gets penalised at the breakdown. So three points for the French. So yeah, his carrying game was pretty good. Big defensive shift. And um, yeah, Flamont is my guy in the second row. Alongside another big unit of a man in old James Ryan. Mr. Workrate loves a carry. Loves a carry. 13 carries. So not as like offensively effective in terms of his carries as Flamont in terms of meters per carry. 13 runs for 8 meters, but he's got a couple more carries in there. And he just carries for days. And he's the top, uh, one of the times, the top Irish tackler. I can't remember, but it's 16 from 16. If he wasn't top, I think he was top. I'll have to go back and check. I should have checked this before the video. Uh, I'm a wee bit sleepy, actually, because um, I didn't nap after the game today. I should have, because it was at 4 in the morning. 16 from 16 tackles. Huge shift. Um, just, he's everywhere. He's a big physical unit. Uh, wins a couple of lineouts, has a couple of passes. He does concede a few penalties, I think three, which kind of put them, I think a couple of them were back-to-back, -back, so puts them a little bit on the back foot, but ultimately... Uh, James Ryan is about going forward and about making other people go backwards because he's a big dominant tackler. So um, there you go, type five, all done. Uh, Lucy's, I managed to put one of the Italian guys on here, an old Seb Negri. Um, yeah, big shift from the blind side, man, uh, for Italy. He was very busy, very, very busy and probably their most effective ball carrier, certainly from the forwards. Like, a couple of lots, I was pretty busy at the back, trying to make something from nothing, but... 14 runs for 41 meters, pretty good shift, has a clean break, beats four defenders, so as I said, certainly their most effective uh, forward ball carrier, uh, four passes, wins a couple of lineouts, 100% tackling rate from seven from seven, doesn't concede any penalties, just genuinely pretty impressive, uh, in what was like a pretty quiet first half as well, um, you know, he still got through his work and kind of managed to stand out in that game where, you know, they won the second half marginally. Um, there wasn't that much to shout about in terms of like getting on the edge of your seat for that game, but yeah, I still thought Negri, despite that, um, still managed to stand out. Uh, another guy who I thought stood out was another Englishman, an old Jack Willis. Yeah, he's busy. Uh, certainly not as offensively minded as Negri with like six runs for eight meters. That's nothing flash, but he scores a try. It's a more try and he looked pretty excited to be scoring it. Uh, welcome back to the number seven jersey for him. He has three passes, but man, 21 out of 23 tackles. Guy was tackling the house down. Um, yeah, the English guys had to make a few tackles in this game, and uh, he didn't even play the full 80. So I hate to think how many. I think he would have passed Flamont's 26 if he'd played 80 minutes, but he didn't play 80 minutes. He came off, um, was replaced by Ben Earl. So he wins a turnover in that time, doesn't concede any penalties. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty good outing for him, I thought. Uh, he really, really showed up pretty nicely. And you know who I'm going to put at number eight? It's old Kalen Doris. And I will get to the honorable mentions at, at one point, but if Matt Fagerson had played six or seven, he'd be in the side because he was immense for the Scots. But I couldn't I couldn't put Fagerson above Doris because Doris was just insane. I leaned towards the more offensively minded stuff, personally. I mean... Vegas had, had a heck, heck of a defensive shift, plus a try, but Doris's stuff is incredible. 18 carries, the most of anybody this weekend. Uh, 88 meters, I think he was the third in that game, and certainly the most of forwards this weekend. He beats three defenders. Like, if I was going on about that Bielan pass, like when the French kick that ball to Ireland, who do they give it to truck it up on kick return from the first phase? It's Doris. Doris gets it over the advantage line. Then there's the space for the Bielum pass to Keenan. Like Doris, just, man, uh, 88 meters, like I said, he's just getting the ball forward. Eight passes and offload. Uh, a try assist as well that 
how did he do it? Like passing it while being tackled. Wide ball to ring rows to get the bonus form. That was insane. Um, yeah, what can I say? The guy's crazy. Six from nine tackles is not his best shift. He was a lot better defensively last week, but his energy was just all going forward. He was world class. Really, really world class. So, um, yeah, a turnover conceded if you're looking for something negative to say, but um, Kalen Doris, he's a pretty good rugby player. So that's your forwards for this week. Uh, scrum half, I mean, DuPont. He kind of just gets it by default sometimes, but geez, he's a good player. I kind of want to put somebody else there sometimes. It's other guys play well, but DuPont, it helps that he plays 80 minutes as well. So he's able to kind of show off more what he can do. He gets more time, but yeah, he does some weird stuff, doesn't he? He's a, he's a real bulldog. 14 runs. I don't know what a bulldog means in this context. He's strong. Uh, a bulldog's particularly strong. 14 runs, 74 meters, two clean breaks. And six defenders beaten. Those are numbers that you would usually see from like Duan van der Merwe on the wing. You know, a bunch of defenders beaten and clean breaks and, and runs. But he's a nine. So those are kind of exceptional. 73 passes is normal for a nine. It's kind of high, but three offloads as well. 11 from 12 tackles is pretty good. Uh, scrum halves are often susceptible to missing a few, just usually with the size mismatch. But... 11 from 12, including that incredible one where he somehow stops Mac Hansen from scoring a try, like defying gravity. So, yeah, DuPont's pretty crazy. Like, he does have a couple of turnovers because he did certainly once he, like, passed it to nobody. I seem to remember once he carried, got a bit isolated, I think turned over, but, yeah, DuPont's pretty incredible. Enjoy watching him play because that's a once in a whatever generation, maybe, kind of talent. Uh, 10, and I picked them last week too, it's the same two guys, uh, Finn Russell, and I think even more clear cut this week, last week maybe a bit debatable, and there's certainly other guys who played well at 10 this week, but Finn Russell in that second half was just on another planet, uh, 12 runs, 49 meters, and two defenders beaten, believe it or not, it's actually better than most in terms of, uh, fly halves running the ball, <laughs> weirdly, Johnny Sexton ran a bunch of meters this week, so that's kind of one where he did have a bit of competition, uh, but those are pretty good numbers. He's not afraid of taking the ball to the line. He loves a wee run. 25 passes, two offloads, uh, three try assists. All of them in the second half. Like he almost had one in the first half where he cross kicked it and the kicking game was everywhere as well. Uh, cross kicked it to Kyle Stain. But I mean, try assist number one, the little offload to Kyle Stain where it doesn't seem like it's possible, but he gets it away. Uh, the cross kick to Kyle Stain in the second half, which does uh, find his man. And then now uh, the final pass of the game, the floated ball to Matt Fagus and three try assists. He would have got like what you'd call a secondary assist for the Kinghorn try. It's his cross kick to Duhan. Duhan gets it to Kinghorn. So, man, the guy was just, he had the ball on the string. Apart from his goal kicking, which was a little bit off. Yeah. Uh, eight from nine tackles as well. So he just genuinely did a bit of everything. He was just a real magician, wasn't he? So when he's in form like that, he's a very, very, very difficult guy to play and certainly one of the most entertaining guys in world rugby. So another one, be happy that you get to watch rugby players like that because they won't be around forever. Hopefully somebody else steps up, but uh, kind of hard guys to replace, eh? Midfield, uh, I went with, and I was really pleased for this guy, Ollie Lawrence. What well, didn't he not even initially make the England squad? And now he's there starting twelve. Uh, I know he's usually a 13, but geez, he did well in the midfield. So nice to have just a big dude who loves trucking it up straight. He's so good at that. He's such a physical guy, man. Uh, 11 runs, 58 meters, a clean break, and 8 defenders beaten. Uh, yeah, he's a weapon. He's a real weapon at 12. So play him there a bit more. Only two passes. Maybe that's one aspect you could say that they um, need to kind of vary up a bit of his game. But if he's there to truck the ball up, he's, he's there to truck the ball up. 8 from 9 tackles. Wins a turnover, uh, but certainly the biggest attacking threat England had uh, against Italy. Um, does have a turnover conceded and a penalty conceded, but yeah, ultimately. Uh, yeah, other sides will not like seeing him lining up uh, at 12 and just coming barreling straight at them because, um, yeah, that's what he does really well. So really pleased for him because I think from what limited amount I've seen of the Premiership this year, he's been in good form. So it's a good reward for a man in form. Uh, speaking of a bit of form, I managed to go with Hugh Jones again. Still looks very good. Obviously, his kind of best looking moment from the weekend was the line break set up by Tuipilotu. Might have been a sneaky four pass there, uh, but either way, 
Those guys have got kind of a telepathic understanding going on. He hits that gap from Tupolotsu and cranks through some meters. Uh, he ends up beating nine defenders in that game, which is uh, a bit of a handful. He gets 67 run meters uh, from five runs, which is a really good return. Six passes. And defensively, man, 12 from 13 tackles. Not getting a lot of praise. Probably will be in some quarters, but yeah, don't doubt this guy. I mean, we think of Hugh Jones. You don't usually think he's going to make 12 tackles and only miss one. You think about the attacking stuff, but no, he did really well. Didn't concede any penalties. So, uh, yeah, that's a pretty fine-looking midfield with him and Tupolotu at the moment. Chris Harris being put out of a job for now anyway. So, there you go. Uh, as we get to the outside backs, I should say, uh, if you haven't watched any of the games, because there were some real crackers, and you're outside the free-to-air territories, use ExpressVPN down in the description. That's probably the cheapest way you can get to watch them free-to-air. You can watch them on demand. Happy days. Um, ITV, BBC, RTE... Virgin, you can pick your free-to-air supplier and just jump on. Set your server, and you're away, basically. Happy days. Watch some rugby. Uh, outside backs, another week, and it's another Duhan van der Merwe. Weirdly, like, I think in the first half, he made maybe two carries. Maybe three. It wasn't much, and one of them was him getting caught in his own in-goal area with Scotland, where it kind of sixes and sevens, but he finishes the game with 10 runs and 100 metres. So impressive second half from Duan. He finishes with three clean breaks and nine defenders beaten. I'm pretty sure he had not much of either in the first half. As I said, he was pretty anonymous. Uh, but he finishes with a try assist, which is the Kinghorn one. Nice pass after he takes that cross kick to, to feed it to the unmarked guy who's coming on at pace. He makes two from two tackles. Maybe not as dramatic as last week with the couple of tries, but Duhan van der Merwe uh, still looking like he's in pretty good form. Uh, another winger who's in good form is old Damien Peno on the right wing. Competitive won the right wing this week, but Peno, man, he edges it for me. He's got the best numbers of any of the wingers in terms of like run meters and defenders beaten. Run meters, he had 104, many of them in the try that he set up and finished. And uh, 11 defenders beaten as he beats old Duhan by a couple. Um, so yeah, 10 runs, uh, a clean break, and he... Um, yeah, he sets up that one to try, which is just such a weird one because there's not a lot going on in that phase. Like, they're kind of being pushed backwards. Um, you know, Hansen's just kicked it through. The French guy's still in the 22. They shift it wide. And then Peno from a, a pass that's hit the grass just finds some space, goes around, I think it's Porter and somebody else. I think maybe Sexton, right? He goes through a bunch of guys, gets it to Jelanche, who... Has a big carry of his own, and then he finishes the move himself. He's able to gas through and pass. There was a Hansen who was chasing him. Yeah, man. Uh, Peno had a pretty pretty good game. That's the only try that the Irish conceded, and it was um, a pretty special one. It took something special to score. Seven passes as well, four from five tackles. He almost got James Lowe. He almost got him. Some would say he did get him. Got him that foot and touch. Some would say he didn't use his arms, but either way, uh, Peno, pretty much a big old attacking weapon for France. And uh, the last one, um, I will be surprised if anyone is surprised with the choice of Hugo Keenan at fullback. He was immense. Him and Doris for that Irish side are looking in very, very dangerous form. 18 runs for 181 run meters, which is a stupid amount. If you watch the game which had like really bad weather conditions and a lot of kick in, not a lot of running. There's sometimes when you'll see teams not get that many more run meters than what Keenan got in that one game. Sometimes teams will have two, 300 run meters. So 181 is just insanity. Two clean breaks, two defenders beaten. He gets that try from the inside pass from Bielham. Decides not to pass it himself. He goes through uh, Ramos and Intermark. It's a, it's a great choice, man, because he burns them. Uh, seven passes from him at offload, 301 kick meters as well. He almost sets up Mac Hansen for a try, barring that Dupont, uh, you know, try saver. Kicks a really beautiful 50-22. He makes four from five tackles of his own. He looks safe at the back. Uh, he does have a couple of turnovers conceded, but goodness gracious me. Uh, Keenan, class, class, class from him. So there you go, folks. That is the 15. I promised some honorable mentions. I will start just again with Matt Fagerson. He was immense. Heaps of tackles, scored a try, one of the most effective forwards carrying in that game. Guy was on fire. Barring Doris's freak 
performance than uh, it'd be Ferguson. Ludlam also got up there a bunch of tackles for, for England as well. Really busy work rate. Capuozzo for Italy had like 14 defenders beaten, which is even more than um, than Peno got. So yeah, Capuozzo at fullback was trying to make something from nothing. Uh, at times, and he's uh, he's a live wire. Uh, Jack Morgan for Wales. There's no Welshman on the ball, but he won a couple of turnovers and got through a bunch of tackles, but it was hard going forward for the Welsh guys, wasn't it? Uh, Rutza for Italy was also one of the more effective forward ball carries this week. He had a bunch of um, carries and a bunch of defenders beaten. Uh, Kelleher came off the bench for Ireland and looked really solid, so uh, pleased for him. He certainly wasn't expecting to play that many minutes. Ringrose... Scored a try, beat some defenders. Fiku as well, a bunch of tackles and a bunch of defenders beaten. Carl Stain, uh, a couple of tries. Maybe you can gift them more to Finn Russell, but someone's got to be there to get the ball from him. Uh, Kinghorn as well looked good when he came on. Also another guy who got more minutes than you would have thought. Sexton controlled the game well and ran it with more speed than I remember him having. Uh, James Lowe scored that athletic try in the corner and whatnot. So there you go, folks. Uh, team of the week. As always, you guys let us know your thoughts, and um, yeah, I will talk to you guys again soon. See you later.